Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in Lhasa, Tibet with Travel China Tibet Tours. And today we have a special invitation to go to a local Tibetan family home. And they're gonna prepare for us. They're gonna cook for us. I think it's over 10 different local, authentic Tibetan food dishes. Uh, and we're gonna have a chance to see the process as they make the food. We're gonna taste the dishes. It's gonna be an exciting meal. There's gonna be a, a range of different dishes. I know we're gonna have a sheep's head and other incredible Tibetan food. I'm gonna share the process with you. We're gonna see the, the food and I'm gonna share it all with you in this video. But before we go, we're having a quick breakfast, having a little bit of tea at the local Tibetan tea house, which is like right down the street from where we're staying. Uh, we got some bread. We got some both sweet tea and black tea. And there's just, there's just no better way to get your day started in the cool Tibetan breeze of Lhasa than with drinking hot tea. And then this one is a local, local Tibetan fry bread, which you see a lot of people eating this and even carrying it like in their bags throughout the day to eat. It's like fried around the outside and kind of kind of fluffy on the inside. It's a really good texture. Slightly chewy, crispy from friedness, and gooey on the inside. And then a lot of people also dip it in their sweet tea. And then I've noticed that most tea shops in Lhasa, they have two different types of tea. One is the sweet milk tea. One is the black tea, the salted black tea. And I actually prefer the salted black tea. Got it, but we got another thermos of salted black tea. Yeah, it's slightly salty. The tea is like very light in flavor, but it's, it's like growing on me. I really like it, like a soup. Okay, from here, uh, we are gonna head over to the family home and start the cooking. city but that was about a 15 minute drive to the outskirts of the city we're at the base of the mountain which is in the misty peaks the location is superb it's gorgeous and this is where we're gonna meet up with our host family who's gonna cook just yeah an amazing Tibetan meal look at this place Mingmar 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 okay nice to meet you What's your hat? Okay. <laughs> okay, so from the main road, walk down the alley a little bit into this courtyard, a traditional Tibetan home. Wow, this is beautiful. Oh, yes. Wow. Hello, hello. Good garden. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, beautiful house. So we have been welcomed into the home. There's a big courtyard. There's kind of like an entrance gate and then a big courtyard and then maybe the kitchen over here. But uncle is welcoming us into this room. Thank you. Well, so this is the inside seating, kind of like the living room, I think. It's so beautiful. Like everything, the carpets, the wooden boxes, the decorations. Everything is so ornate, the Tibetan designs. Very cool. Yeah, so we're just, we're sitting down now. There's some snacks on the table. This one over here is a bar barley, kind of like deep fried crunchy snack. And then there's candies, there's yak cheese, and then there's just roasted barley. Uh, but then she also just served us some butter tea. Oh yes. Yeah, it's so good. And there's no milk in here, it's just butter. Uh, but he was just mentioning that it's in the city, they use kind of a weaker butter, not the real full fat creamy butter, whereas the nomads um, in the countryside use more of the stronger, stronger yak butter. 
because they need it in the countryside where the conditions are harsh, the elevation, the the cold. Oh, that's good though. I'm gonna try one of these snacks. Mm. Oh yeah, it's really good. Made from barley. It's like a crispy cracker, a fried crispy cracker. Chase that with butter too. Okay. Now I'm gonna move over and try the the yak cheese, the dried yak cheese. And there's two different types. One is more of a brown one, which he said is kind of like a fried yak cheese, and the other one is a little bit. The white one is more sweet. And do you chew it or do you? Yeah, it's chewy. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's really crispy, but not like rock hard. And then you taste kind of a sourness aftertaste. Very good. gonna get started cooking now so we're gonna move over here to the kitchen even this outdoor seating section is so nice it's so chill um, and then over onto the right hand side this is the kitchen even the kitchen has the same kind of sofa seating areas uh, but Andy is getting started on a dish she's making it's like a type of pasta made with wheat um, and she's just making these tiny little formations in her finger and then moving over to this side of the kitchen, let me introduce you some of the ingredients of the day. We've got the sheep head, and I'm just, I think these are a variety of different yak meats, minced yak meat, there's sliced yak meat, there's maybe more yak meat, there's yak cheese, and then over here, this is the actual the ginseng fruit, which is, yeah, again, it's not related to common ginseng, but this is like a Tibetan ginseng, and it's very important in the, the Tibetan diet, Tibetan culture. It's considered a long life food, and also often, it's often eaten during New Year's as well. Yes. Okay. There's so many different cool containers and storage devices, uh, traditional style. One they have like a, I, mean, I think it's a yak skin bag that you can carry butter that you can carry food in. Then there's a box with salt. And then if you look over here, this is a, I mean, it's a wood burning, but also you can cook on it. And instead of burning wood, they often burn either cow dung or yak dung. We're still preparing the ingredients before cooking. Uncle wants to show us his, it's his own little chapel within his home. Every family in Tibet yeah, would have a, their own chapel. Every family in people, they have their own chapels. So they mm. have many rooms in their home, but this chapel is the most important house for them. Mm. So when you see in this house, they have many pictures. Mm. So it's mostly the Geluk school of Buddhism. Three oh. masters and so the present Buddhas. How do you say yak in Tibet? Yak, sha. Yak, 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 sha. Yak, sha. Yak, sha. Okay. Sha. Sha. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, yak, sha. <laughs> Okay, so the preparation is ready. They're going to get started actually cooking the dishes. The first dish that they're going to make is momos. Momos are one of the most common of Tibetan dishes. Uh, little dumplings. They're making two different types. One is yak with minced yak and one is with potatoes. And now she's kneading the dough to be able to make the little dumplings. She's so fast at uh, rolling out that dough. Um, and the, the actual center of the dough is thicker than the outsides. It's thinner so that you can wrap it so that it can hold in that soup from the, the fat of the yak. Mm. 
butter and cheese. A very on the other side of the kitchen from the Momo's uncle is making and mixing a very interesting Tibetan dish of yak cheese, like shredded yak cheese. He added in some butter and really like mashed that together and then added in brown sugar and he's just mixing and mashing that together. Uh, they say that's one of the most nourishing like force like powerful Tibetan dishes. So much cheese and butter in there. Like pure cheese and butter. Okay, so the pan of yak momos are complete and that's using wheat, using dough flour. But the potato momos are totally different. They're not even made with that same wrapper, the actual wrapper is potato, mashed potato. He puts in a, he makes a little ball of the potato, adds in a little bit of the same minced yak meat, and then forms them into little ovals that are gonna be deep fried. So it's, it is a momo, but it's a totally different momo, totally different composition. And then also he's making just a couple, just because Uncle wanted me to taste, he's making a couple of the yak cheese momo. So that yak cheese, butter, brown sugar mixture into a momo. And those are bigger, like a flower shape. Okay, the stove is on. I think that's a pot of just hot water because they're gonna start steaming the momos. They're gonna steam the sheep's head. For the sheep's head, actually, they pre-cooked it last night because they had to boil it for four hours, I think. Uh, but then they're gonna re-steam it. They're gonna cook the rest of the dishes. And now comes the cooking part. Of the kitchen, he's making boiled yak meatballs. So that's that same mixture that went into the momos, I think. It's gonna be a yak meatball soup. So then she added in some vermicelli noodles and also some mushrooms. And that's gonna simmer away. That smells so good already. Is that curry powder? Yes, some spices for the meat. Nice. Now that all the ingredients are ready and prepared, it's just like things are going, they're just going full speed. Uh, so, and he just threw on the momos onto the boiling water to steam. Uh, the soup is boiling, and then Uncle also just put on another, like a wok pan. He's gonna start frying something. There are just dishes happening all over the place. This is the excitement. First fried some, deep fried some sliced potato and that's gonna be cooked with lamb meat. A lamb meat or yak meat? Lamb meat. A lamb meat, okay, so that's a different dish. Uh, but now that he finished that, now he's deep frying those potato momos with yak meat on the inside. offering us the cheese mobile. This is right out of the, the steamer. These are the big ones. Oh wow, it's sweet because of that brown sugar. And then the cheese. Yeah, that's some strong cheese. That's some powerful cheese, the yak cheese. And, but then you've also got, yeah, the brown sugar in there makes it sweet. What else is it? Oh, the butter. So it's like juicy from the butter and then, wow, that's almost like a, it's like sweet and sour and, animal tasting dumpling. Okay. And right as I'm taking that bite, he's about to put the lamb head on the steamer. Yeah. 
Kota di Hindi Om Ades ya Pak Mat Ketu Om Ades nama ini Kota di Bisu Kota di Jaya Okay, and then he deep fried the lamb, which I think was pre cooked, maybe pre boiled before. Uh, deep fried the lamb, that's going to go with the fried potatoes, fried lamb and fried potatoes. It's gonna be so unbelievably good. That's like three times cooked lamb. I, I thought he was done when he deep fried that lamb. Uh, but then he heated up, he melted down some butter. Uh, he cooked some onions in there and also some green onions. Um, then he put the deep fried lamb and the deep fried potatoes back into that butter mixture. Tossed them, added in some salt, added in some curry powder. Oh, that smells unbelievable. Oh, that's gonna be so good. The next dish that he's making is a very common Tibetan dish of sliced yak uh, with pickled radish, pink pickled radish. It's like a... This is another such an interesting dish with that dough, that little pasta that she made. First they boiled it, then he melted down a bunch of butter, like a block of butter. Um, then he added that boiled pasta into the pan, then he added in a lot of brown sugar, and then finally a couple handfuls of yak cheese. What a macaroni and cheese! moving back to the kitchen, but let me just try to explain everything that just happened. Um, so there's some raw yak meat that we're going to be eating as well. Uh, but that's what we're going to eat with the raw yak meat is something called sampa, which is ground barley flour. And sampa is a staple of Tibetan food. She put it into this yak skin um, and then mixed in some, then we went over to the other room, she poured in some butter tea. Um, and that, then she just like massaged it in the yak skin, getting the right texture, the amount of butter tea, the amount of liquid to go with that flour. Mashed it and massaged it in that yak skin and then brought it back to the kitchen and then she made it into these little hand-shaped little dumplings that's gonna be to eat with the raw yak meat. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, and then the final step is taking the sheep head out of the steamer. I think that's the final dish. So many things have been going on. So many different dishes, the variety. But he put that lamb head, or actually a sheep head, onto a little wooden pedal, pedestal tray. You can just see like it's been steamed for so long and boiled for so long, like you can see that, that skin just like peeling back. It's just gonna melt.
This is just one of those meals where I'm overwhelmed at the, the diversity of the ingredients, but also just the different dishes that I've never, I've never experienced anything like it elsewhere, ever. I mean, some of the dishes, like the momos, but the, the, the dish with the pasta, with the butter, with the cheese and the brown sugar, the sampa with the raw yak, the sheep's head Tibetan style, the ginseng fruit. This is just an overwhelming spread of Tibetan food, by far the most beautiful Tibetan meal I've ever seen, and their hospitality, and the, the house, and everything. This is spectacular. And we're just waiting on the final touches. Uncle and Auntie are gonna sit down and we're gonna, we're gonna dig into this Tibetan feast. Oh, okay, first he's, he's breaking into the sheep head. And that just, the meat just like scrapes off the bone. It's so tender. It's been boiled for like four hours, I think. And then steamed, he probably steamed it for about an hour as well. It's so tender and the best thing about a sheep's head or any animal head that you eat is just the little bits and crevices, the, the different textures and bits that you get. Oh, that's so fatty and tender. Oh, is that chili powder? It's kind of salty. It's so flavorful. So Uncle and I are going to try the sampa with the raw yakut. What you do is you take a piece of the, the sampa, and this is the black sampa, black barley. So you eat that first, okay? It's like a really, really fine... It, it's dry, but not dry at the same time, maybe because of that butter. But it's, yeah, I really like it. It's doughy, and you take some of the raw yak meat, put it into your palm. This is a cool technique. And as that kind of like gummy sampa is still kind of like coating your teeth and your the top of your gum, then you take the the yak the raw yak meat. Oh, wow, and that's just like a burst of flavor. It's so tender and so juicy. And you can taste a lot of chili powder in there too. The onions in there, oh, that's unbelievably good. That combination, that is stunning. Mm. Very, good. Very good, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try one of the potato, fried potato momos. Oh, that is stunning. It's like the texture of the potato. <laughs> It's like bouncy in texture, just with enough, it's just a little bit of yak meat in there, just enough to flavor the whole, to power it. Wow, those are extraordinary. Oh man. Thank you. Okay, this one is the yak meatball soup with vermicelli and mushrooms in it. Mm. Oh, that focuses on the yak meatballs themselves because the yak meatballs, they were boiled in the broth to make that broth. It's meaty. I love the texture of those woodier mushrooms. Like the meatball, it tastes quite lean, but maybe because the fat has boiled out into the broth, into the soup. That's like a warming soup, that's for sure though. You can taste the yak fat in it. Okay, it's time to get started on the yak momos now. Okay, so he grabs the yak momo. Okay. Good. And first what he does is he kind of bites the, the side, he actually bites the side of it to open that little pocket of meat. And, and then you put this chili sauce into the yak so that way it doesn't fall off. I like that technique. You maximize your chili sauce without it falling off the outer. Because when you just roll it in the chili sauce, sometimes it just doesn't stick. That's how you ensure you get it filled with chili. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, maybe even there's some... Maybe some Sichuan pepper in that chili sauce as well. Mm. Oh, that's incredible. It's kind of citrusy. The yak meat on the inside, the yak meatball. And then the gummy wrapper of the, the momo. Okay, and then next dish, this is the fried lamb chops with fried potato, which is simmered in butter. Wow, this one looks so good. I'm gonna try to navigate to a 
piece of meaty, deep fried, and then simmered or, or uh, sauteed in butter. Oh, wow. It's so tender. I wasn't even expecting it to be that tender. It's so tender. Um, it is fatty, it is greasy. You taste that butter on it. And then, I think just like being simmered with those onions gives it like that, that like onioniness. But that is real lamb meat. You know it's lamb when you're eating it. Oh, that's flavorful. That is so good. I'm gonna add a little more of that chili sauce to this lamb for my next bite. That chili sauce is incredible. That is unbelievably tender. Oh, wow. Mm. Well, it's so good. I think, the, I think the touch that makes it is that final saute and butter. And they said especially if you're starting to feel heavy from the, from the yak, from the sheep, from the fat and the butter, eat some of the radish and that will kind of like digest, that will kind of like wash it down. Mm. I think because of the vinegar, because it's pickled, kind of that acidity. Oh wow, that is so good. I love that sourness from the pickled radish that, and then the meatiness again from the yak. What other pieces do you like to eat? Uncle is dissecting the sheep head, but he gave me a piece of the cheek. Dip that into the, oh, the cheek is one of the best pieces, that's for sure. Dip that into the chili sauce. The chili powder. Oh, the cheek is incredible. It's just melt in your mouth tender. Fatty in all the right places. And just gelatinous bits and meat bits. And then he also just sliced up the tongue. Oh wow, that just melts in your mouth. So you take a piece of the, he sliced up the tongue as well. Yes. You have to, tongue, you have to peel that skin. Because I think it's tough and just unchewable. It's so tender, it just like, the tongue just falls apart in your fingers. But that skin is very tough. Peel that skin. Okay, and that's just the pure, look at that texture. Oh wow, the tenderness is just unbelievable. And that just, again, it just melts in your mouth. Because it's been boiled and steamed for so long. That is amazing. As a part of Tibetan food culture, there's no real distinction between, there's no really desserts, but there are snacks, there are main dishes, but the, the sweet dishes are just eaten along with the meal as well, uh, from what I understand. So there's two sweeter dishes, which can, I mean, I could have eaten them at any point throughout this meal, but it is like the last two dishes. Uh, one of them, which I will start with, the ginseng fruit. It is like a little bulb, a little root, I believe though. Um, and for this dish, he just made it very simple. And we, we saw it all over the market in Lhasa. He just uh, simmered down some butter, melted some butter, put in that ginseng fruit, and then he stir fried that around and then added in a bunch of sugar and then just kind of caramelized it. And that's it, like five minutes done. Let's try it. And I love the like different shapes of these. Mmm. They kind of have a texture yeah, similar to a potato. Starchy, crisp, and then like rich. But this is also considered very healthy, very nutritious, which it is uh, because those are, I mean, they're grown in Tibet from a very high elevation. That's good. In that. Okay. And then the other one to try is a little handmade pasta, which then he boiled and then sauteed again in yak butter plus a bunch of uh, yak cheese and brown sugar. Oh, wow. That could be the world's strongest macaroni and cheese. Mm. But it's almost like fruity tasting from that brown sugar, the yak butter, the yak cheese in there. And I think it, it melts, but at the same time, it kind of like remains unmelted at the same time, even when it's cooked because it's so strong, because it's so, it's so resilient, but yeah, that is a that is a strong, animaly, little doughy macaroni taste, and those two sweet dishes they're very, very special Tibetan dishes, very ceremonial, 
very common on important days in Tibet. Okay, and we almost forgot there's one more dish, but this is kind of like a snack. Uh, this is what we saw Uncle mix and make as well, but it's a combination of a bunch of yak cheese, a bunch of just raw yak butter, and then brown sugar. And then he just like mixed and mashed that together into a dough. And then she made these little pucks, little like cookies out of them. This is like a, this is probably the most powerful energy fat cookie like you've ever had in your life. It's like a power bar, a next level Tibetan power bar. Smell the yak in it for sure, that cheese. <laughs> Oh, wow, that is powerful. That is by far the most potent energy power bar you've ever had. Like the butter, I guess, that's just holding it together because that's just straight shredded yak cheese and brown sugar. Wow, that is a lot of, a lot of calories packed into this. That's good. Oh man, and at this point in the meal, it is time to, to lean back. That's why Tibetan sofas, oh man. That was a, just a superb meal. And the hospitality of uncle and auntie, them welcoming us into their home, into their living room, into their kitchen, to learn from them about Tibetan culture. I've had Tibetan food before, but nothing of this variety, of this extensiveness, of this ingredients, of this decoration, and it was a privilege to have this meal. <sighs> what a meal. Thank you. Thank you, and this is at the end. Very cool, and I think made from, made from silk, but it's a custom, it's a tradition in Tibet. Their hospitality, their hospitality shines. Just stepping outside of the compound, and wow, the sun has really come out. When the sun comes out in Tibet, it's just blazing. I also want to say a huge thank you to Travel China Tibet uh, for bringing me, for arranging this entire experience, for bringing me to Tibet. They've done an amazing job, and they custom they can customize tours to Tibet. Uh, so a big thank you to Travel China Tibet. I'll leave their link in the description box below as well. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Lhasa, Tibet, and I will see you on the next video.